hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Curious Realm continuing coverage of Texas UFO Con 2023. We have with us now researcher and author Michael Whittington. Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell, sorry. Uh, <laughs> if Mitchell I had a dollar for every I know, right? Um, uh, Close Encounters of the Texas Kind is his book. He was here giving a presentation earlier on UFOs and the changing the changing tapestry of the world of UFO UAP research as things kind of progress in our society. There has been, I think, a, uh, a paradigm shift, and it just suddenly happened without a lot of fanfare. And we've gone from seeing the classic saucer-type UFOs that yeah. everybody associates with Roswell and with, with every, you know. Uh, yeah, everything since the term flying saucer. I think the first slide I put up was uh, actually of Marvin the Martian, mm -hmm. who was a Bugs Bunny guy. Yeah, yeah. But even back then, they had a classic saucer shaped it. So that's just been yep. indoctrinated into our psyche as a, as a civilization, you know. Yeah. And now it's changed. Mm. Now everybody's seeing these silver orbs. And uh, that's kind of the impetus of that book is uh, I walked out in my backyard and looked up. And here was this silver ball in the air. I mean, it was up, it, you know, high, and, but it was huge. And, and was, that was right here in town. That like was, you, you live here. I live here in, in Jefferson. Jefferson. And actually what had happened was um, we had a storm coming, and uh, we live in a grove of pecan trees. So if the wind blows, we could have problems. Yeah. So I was out trying to see what was going to happen, and thankfully it missed us. It went to our west mm. uh, by a few miles. And, and by the way, if, if the author thing doesn't work out, I'm going to be a weatherman because there seems to be no pressure to get that right. You know? <laughs> That's right. But uh, Only job you can yeah. get wrong half the time and get a raise every year. <laughs> I walked out on the front porch, and, and so you could see it in the west you know and there's thunder and lightning and i'm just thankful that it didn't hit us and as i look yeah. up in the sky flash of lightning illuminated this big round silver sphere and it was just for an instant and you didn't see it in the sky before that it was dark anything, you know, yeah this yeah. was not this was not so i did not until yeah I got illumination and in that just that split second like a million things went through my head of you know a, what is that? And mm. the, I think the second thing I thought was that is a manufactured item. That is not, I'm not looking at something natural. Mm. But I called my wife immediately and, and said, get out here, bring a camera. And when it lightened again, it was gone. It was moving pretty quick, I guess, because it was nowhere in sight. Wow. Um, and so that kind of started me on this journey. I wanted to see if anybody else had ever seen anything like this, because to me, this was weird. I mean, if you look back at all the, the landmark cases, and I don't necessarily mean that ones that we consider true or false, but mm, the ones yeah. that created a cultural explosion, you know, Roswell, Roswell is one, and there's a million theories. Yeah, or, Kenneth Arnold, uh, yeah. like it, I said, the, the progeneration of the term flying saucer. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. And so here I am with, I saw something that was nothing like that, so I started going back through Texas history, uh, and we go back to the 1800s, I yeah. mean, different things. Most of them are disc-shaped. Down in Del Rio, there was a crash ship they call it uh, you know the texas roswell you, yep. yeah and uh, it was a disc very i guess very uh, classic like he would always talk about them and the the guy that was there looking at it he actually saw through a rip in it and saw the classic uh, gray type bodies you know mm -hmm. of the grays and so up until i saw that one that's what i was expecting <laughs> if i sure. ever see one it's going to be that and then I, this is thrown a curveball into my thinking so yeah the book came out of it, but I didn't find anybody that had seen the same kind of sphere. Now, mm. the most interesting thing was uh, maybe six months after the book came out, uh, there's a paranormal conference here in Jefferson, in mm -hmm. this building, in fact. And yep. I had my table set up down there, and one of the guys uh, here in town that runs a bed and breakfast, a friend of mine, Jerry, came by. He's here today. In fact, he heard me tell this story I, when I was talking. I said, he can correct me. This is the guy I'm about to talk about. But he came by my table. He said, oh, you've written a book on UFOs. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, I've seen one. And I said, really? Tell me all about it. And he said, uh, my wife Ann and I, we were standing by the bank. Our banker was walking in, so we got out of the car to talk to her for a second and looked up in the sky, and here, way up in the air, is this big silver ball. Yeah, he describes the exact same thing. And uh, he had never even seen the book. Yeah. We had never talked about it, and he had seen the exact same thing at a different time. Mine was at night during a storm. Here was broad, broad daylight. daylight. Yeah, And, of course, 
Jerry said the first thing that went to my mind was, and one time I didn't get my phone out. He said, I just jumped out yeah. of the car to talk to this person. So. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and then maybe a year or two later, we started getting these releases from the government. You know, like the Mosul, you're familiar with that. Mm-hmm. A, uh, a spy plane actually got a sphere between it and the ground yeah. in Iraq, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's been a lot of people trying to detract from it and say, well, that's not real. It, it is definitely one of them that has, has hit the 5%, yep. Mitch. It is, it's changed things. And, it, it, you know, originally it was just go fast, gimbal, um, things like that. And even go fast, uh, uh, there, during the NASA panel, one of the NASA scientists had a field day with that one going through, like, I don't know what everybody's confused about. Uh, right here on the actual frame from the jet is all the scientific information we need to show you that it's an object about 40 feet going yeah. about 45, 40 miles an hour. So that's all we need to know um, is that it's something within a known quantitative range. Move on to the next thing. Um, but the Mosul footage is one that has just popped up uh, from Arrow as as fully anonymous and that or anomalous. And that has been floating around for a little while now for a couple years that that footage has been yeah. floating around so you know the first time i saw that i talked to jerry and then some time went by a year or two and i ate lunch and i uh, i read the news for lunch I, I try not to expose myself a lot to all the horrible news of today but it's, but you know you want to read see what's going on i yeah. read I, I go to a portal that just has the the headlines so mm. you can just go down through it but the uh, the top two or three picture or stories rather they they put a picture with so that day i brought up the news i've got my sandwich and boom the mosul ufo pops up and i'm like that's, that's what it. i saw that's it <laughs> and now when you had that experience um of course like you said your wife was there um you you called for your wife so you were not afraid to share the experience with your oh, wife no no um how how was your experience received? Because I mean, of course, you you do quite a bit of paranormal investigations. You own what is at least on record here the most haunted location in Jefferson. Some say. Um, some say, uh, <laughs> especially a book. Yeah, um, <laughs> they don't uh, they don't have a device that measures. So you know, I can't go to uh, yeah, Claiborne yeah. House and go, oh, this is eight point five yeah, minus yeah, nine yeah. point <laughs> precisely. But, but a lot of weird but stuff the thing happens is, there. Um, the the point is. You were not reticent to share your stories and experiences. No, I'm not. Uh, you know, on the ghost side of my world, it's funny because I, you know, I do live in that house. I've done a mm. lot of investigations around the country. I've written about Winchester House and, uh, you know, Myrtles and all the classic mm. places that I've been to. And on TV, they always have these, uh, you know, scary and. Yeah. You know, and when you talk to the people there, which I've interviewed, you know, all across the, the country, these places, they're all just like, yeah, yeah, weird stuff happens here. Yeah. But, you know, they're not running in terror. Here in Jefferson, because I, I write about stuff like that, I bet there's not a single business downtown where at one point in the last 20 years, the owner hadn't pulled me aside and said, you know, like, hey, gotta, man. yeah, don't tell hey, anybody man. this, but I got to tell you. Yeah, yeah. You know, so once the UFO book came out, same thing happened. People are saying, Interesting. Hey, I got to say this. You and, know? and how many people from here in jefferson have have seen a, at least an object similar to the one that you saw uh three that i know of right now other people have seen things that are more classic ufo mm. kind of, but the newer things and, and at least i feel it, seem to be going toward whatever this new technology is now are we dealing with is, is this next gen alien stuff? You know? Yeah, uh, well, and that's, that is the ongoing question. Yeah. Um, and I fall in the camp of more than likely most of what we are seeing is ours. I am not dismissing the fact of alien life, alien craft, craft from outside of the right. solar system. Um, I, I would honestly tend more, much, much like Grush in the testimony saying, let's keep it to non-human intelligence. Uh, that leaves a much bigger box because yeah. once you say it's alien, right. you, you may as well just put it in a box, just <laughs> like the scientists who said it's nothing. Yeah. You know, um, you've really narrowed the playing field of research at that point to alien. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, like, we know about other dimensions. We know that time is just a construct that we made. Oh, my we, gosh. <laughs> like, there, when you're talking the exotic tech that exists now, if you want to have fun, it's a whole panoply, Mitch. Yeah, if you want to have fun, do some reading on uh, quantum physics. Oh, yeah. Like, if quantum physics is here, 
true magic is right beside you. Well, well, well uh, I just went and covered the International Remote Viewing Association Conference. Okay, right. And one of my favorite things to say is you could not find a field with more people with commas and letters behind their name, Mitch. Physicists, psychiatrists, psychologists. Believe, yeah. And uh, yeah, um, I know you may be tired of hearing it, folks, but I will keep hammering home. This last year, the Nobel Prize went to quantum entanglement went to the fact that two particles, despite distance, can influence each other. So that changes everything. Yeah. That changes everything. So to say non-human intelligence, um, yes, that sets up for the fact that it may be a probe. It may be uh, an auto-programmed thing. It might be us from the future. It might be us from an adjunct Earth in another dimension. Another dimension, You right. know, um, all of those things are in the realm of possibility. And to say alien, once again, you've just built a box right next to the other one. Right. You know, instead of exploring <laughs> the space around the box freely. Um, and, and I think, especially when it comes, like you're saying, to this very rapid switch in, in reporting sightings. And, and granted, you know, whenever you go through MUFON catalogs, things like that, like orbs have definitely been seen for a while. Oh, yeah. Um, I did however. Find a number in here, but not the silver kind. They were like yeah. fireballs, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Right. Glowing orbs. Yes. Things like, I mean, of course, there's the Marfa lights, right, 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 on the opposite tip of Texas from where we're at, um, which is another phenomenon in and of itself, yeah. I firmly believe. Um, because there, there are some really interesting things geologically going on in Marfa. Um, but sightings like this have been happening for ages, ages. Like you said, like Tui Snyder just said in his presenting, 1897 was the huge wave yeah. of, of airship sightings that really began things. Exactly. Um, and an alleged crash right here in Aurora. Yeah, 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 precisely. And it's it's interesting to see this shift of sightings, mentality, going going toward that. Um, and I... I I don't want to discount anybody's sightings. I think it's more the fact of people people are more encouraged to report now, Mitch. People, I think so. A lot of the stigma has started to kind of go away. One of the things I've been saying is, as opposed to 10 years ago, where around a Thanksgiving table you may have had a political conversation. Oh, that ain't happening no. <laughs> now. Hey, you're lucky if you still get together for Thanksgiving. Yes, um, exactly. But if you are... The right. conversation's more than likely about crazy Uncle Bob yeah. and how he may not be so crazy. You know, I uh, and I tell people a lot when they're talking to me and they say, you know, like, oh, I don't I don't go for this UFO stuff. And I go, Wait, have you ever seen one? Oh, no, no, not me. And I'm like, you've never seen anything in the sky that you look up and you go, is that an what airplane the, or is that? Yeah. A, yeah. Well, if, if there's something you wonder about, you've seen a UFO. Yeah. Well, and, you know, granted, I have a cadre of conspiratorialists that listen to my show, a cadre of skeptics, full-on skeptics, who are willing and ready to have their mind changed given the proper evidence. Right. You give me a proper evidentiary chain, my thought form will change with it. Um, and I love that. It's great. But the one thing I've been saying to folks who are poo-pooed on the idea of extraterrestrial intelligence, what have you, folks like my father, yep. let's say, um, who are like, oh, yeah, hey, it's okay. Like they said at the beginning of the whistleblower testimonies, um, let's forget about little green men today, folks. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, we're, the example I give is, so you were okay with the Pentagon Papers uh, showing that we, we went into Vietnam yeah. utterly falsified to make billions of dollars to sell opium, all kinds of things. Um, so you weren't cool with that. Were you cool with Iran-Contra? No? All right. Because apparently what Grush is saying is something on the scale of that has been going on since 1935 oh. with, or 1939 sure. with your employees and your money. <laughs> yes. So let's just bring it down to accountability. That's what that hearing's about. You know, we don't, we don't need evidence of extraterrestrial. What they're showing is that there has been a money train going on Oh. For over 60 years involving this stuff inside of compartmentalized special access programs, obfuscating funds. Um, that only happens for certain reasons, Mitch. You don't do that to make toilet seats. <laughs> you know? Yep. You don't obfuscate money to research new toilet seats. Right. Um, that's new exotic technologies. That's, that's things like that that, yes, may very well be reverse engineered, but you ain't going to make money unless it hits a battlefield 
or unless it hits a shelf. Right. Um, and the only way you're going to explain some of that is to say, okay, we've had access to something. Yeah. Which, you, you know, know. There, a lot of people have come forward over the years and said that, you know, for better or worse, Lazar. You oh, know, sure. You oh, know, well, he's, he's a prime one that, of course, bring, people bring up all the time. And he is the one that I'll say, like, prove him wrong. Yeah. Because there's, there's now element 115. With, that, oddly enough, the same exact characteristics that he said Element 115 had more than 30 years before it was ever discovered in a lab and well, synthesized. And also, <laughs> in all that time, his story has never changed. It's never changed. You know, it's there's a, it a has lot been to be unwavering. Yeah. Unwavering. Uh, yeah. I tell you, I don't yeah, know. But, but, you know, even he, it, for yeah. years now, has been saying, this is where it is. This is how it works. This is. Yeah. But again, that was saucer technology. The same. Yeah. And, and you know, same thing with Philip Corso um, and, and the book after Roswell, right. day after Roswell, day after, yeah. um, things like that, where, yes, he definitely had a different access and realm of knowledge than the average military person. Uh, a lot of that is still yet to be proven. The fact that that was the source of fiber optics, that was the source of laser technology. Um, I was recently told by somebody pretty big in the remote viewing community that, yes, what we are seeing, the majority of it is man-made tech, reverse engineered things, exotic technologies, but there is a cadre of it that is different and that is extraterrestrial. Mm that we are engineering and new engineering for the species who gave it to us because they came to a point evolutionarily that they are no longer individual. The concept of creativity does not exist in their society anymore. In order to attain the things that they attained and to be one of consciousness, they had to lose that mm. creativity and individuality, which means now this amazing technology, they do not have the means by which <laughs> to come up with new applications. The ingenuity right. isn't there. The, the technology is, but the ingenuity to apply it to new things, they've erased that from themselves in order to be a unified species. But we, so they're using us oh, okay. to help engineer new things that they can use to help themselves. I see what you're saying. So interesting concept. It is. It is. You know, and... If we, like, if the Lazar thing is true, and he's been reverse engineering, he used to, he called it the sport model, mm -hmm. thing, the one that he really yeah, yeah. had to work on. And uh, if he's been reverse engineering that, and now we're seeing all these silver things, I mean, we may be trying to reverse engineer an Edsel, and they yeah. have a Lamborghini now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, and that's just it, you know. Um, and, and what technology are you dealing with? Yeah. And especially when you're talking... Uh, experiencers, when you're talking things left over, like last year uh, when Nick Redfern gave his talk on the Cash Landrum incident, mm -hmm. uh, that is one of the incidents where there were physical radiation burns right. on the road. The people who witnessed it had physical radiation burns. Oh, yeah, that was a, the first, like that. first case where you had somebody actually sue the government because yeah. <laughs> they got exposed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that one, I think, was a, uh, a diamond-shaped craft. It was. It yeah. was. That was right down the road from where I grew up. Crosby Huffman area. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. And uh, when, when you're talking about the, the realm of craft scene, because once again, if you go back and you start looking through MUFON documentation, um, NICAP, things like that, there, there is a range yep. of craft that are there. Most of them are the traditional saucer shape, shaped craft. Many of them are boomerang shaped, things like that. Or the triangle shaped. But Just once a again, the, the solid orb is what's new not just orb folks because yes orb lights have been seen right. since like the dawn of man you know some, uh, i just forgot the mountain um, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are numerous places around the country where you can go oh, sure. and see mysterious lights, ball lights, things like that. We, uh, my wife um, and I went just uh, a <clears throat> short ways north of here, maybe an hour, a uh, little more, uh, in Arkansas, Gurdon, mm. Arkansas, the yeah. Gurdon lights. And it's been studied by University of Arkansas, yep. a lot of scientific organizations. So the question is something happening there is yeah. off the table they are seeing these yeah. round lights and yeah. they have been for mount shasta okay that's yeah. the one that was in my head because uh, yeah like the natives have been talking sure. about those lights for for 
hundreds and hundreds of years, like since before things were in the sky. Right. Uh, same thing with the Marfa lights. Like right. those, those were reported by indigenous livers and people traveling long before we had things floating in the sky, uh, even before the Montgolfier brothers, stuff like that. So, but you're right. This, the seamless, you know, uh, metallic looking orb is, is, Within the last 10 to 15 years. Yeah, it's pretty new on the scene it as is, far as things. Everybody is saying the same thing. And it's you know, the kind of things that went through my mind that night is where are the, where are the wings? Where are the stabilizing fins? Mm. Where, you know, where, where are the portals? How do these guys see you? you know? yeah. <laughs> Where's the exhaust? You know, and, and it's nothing. It's, and then people can't deal exhaust, with that. Exhaust, heat, sound, right. light. Doesn't fit any of our models for flight technology today. Yeah, precisely. No control surfaces, yeah. things like that, and even the fact of no rivets, no yeah. seams. Right. Um, extraordinary, to say the least. And uh, there is there is a whole new realm of technology that's popped up. I have a whole knowledge vault on my website full of declassified government documents things like that one of them that's popped up here in the last year is the lockheed martin miniature nuclear reactor for many many decades people have said well any of this technology that you're talking about would take something along the lines of a nuclear reactor <laughs> well this one fits inside of an f-16 yeah so you're talking about something approximately the size of this t eight foot table yep that is a nuclear reactor um, that is a real thing that exists, like working patent, patent number, everything. And that's just an example of technology growing. Well, so if ours is growing, whoever even, those belong to. Well, even the idea, Mitch, of I've got a pretty powerful computer right here, you know. Um, when this thing hit the shelves, it was 10 years old. By all military technology, yeah, yeah. by everything that they use and, and that the NSA uses on their shelf and everything else, that's 10 years old. Yeah. You know, it's, it's nowhere near four years old. Right. Techno it's four years old to the consumer shelf, right. but not to the realm of R&D and everything else. Um, very little of that stuff gets released to the general public. Yep. So for, and it's for general use, and yeah. it's always being upgraded. The new specs for military use are always coming out. I was... Uh, I'm on the board of our museum here in town, and mm. I got a call from our uh, museum director. She said, my computer's out, and I don't know anything about computers. And I said, I I'll go pick you up one. And, uh, it's something I hadn't even seen. Now it's just a screen. Yeah. The technology's in the yeah. Yeah, everything. There's, yeah. you know, there's no there's no wires. There's yeah. no tower. There's no. Yeah. And I brought it back to her, and I said, you got the latest tech. But even that, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, the miniaturization and everything has been it's, it's rem years. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing and incredible to see where we have come, uh, even with cell phones in such a short time. When you, when you really wrap that idea around your head of 20 years ago. 20 years is oh. not a huge amount of time in the time span of humanity or in the time span of technology. And to know that in that time... We took something off the wall and put it on our put it in our pocket with full interconnectivity yeah. with the rest of the world and knowledge with it's, the entire world. Yeah, I've heard a comedian. It's mind numbing. Mind numbing. I heard a comedian doing a uh, a phone call between uh, Paul McCartney and John Lennon in heaven, mm. and John was like, uh, "So you still have uh, televisions down there?" And Paul said, "Oh no, we all have our individual television. We carry yeah. it with us everywhere we go." Yeah. yeah. You know, well, yeah, I yeah. guess really. <laughs> well, and, uh, you know, even then, uh, one of the things I've mentioned for years on my show, Mitch, uh, who thought we'd ever get to a point where we were all carrying a black mirror in our pocket? Yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there, uh, you, you wrote numerous books on the funerary industry, yeah. things like that. Our whole home became the living room <laughs> from the parlor yep. because that used to be where you viewed the body. Exactly. Was the parlor. You know, and now it's the living room. Um, but you'd have been hard pressed back in the day when somebody died to find a mirror uncovered in yep, the home. Exactly. You'd have One been very, you you'd have been yep. very hard pressed. Um, and now we're all just like, let me turn this thing off and have a big 80 inch black mirror in my bedroom while I sleep and let anything from another dimension come through. Um, you're like we're all walking around with a scrying mirror in our pocket. Yeah. Um, and hadn't even given that consideration. Um, oh, well, that was. Yeah. <laughs> 
that was a funny thing to me during COVID. And I had friends on you know, both oh, sides same, of this same. equation. Yeah. People that said, yeah, oh, let's get this shot quick. And other people were saying like, no, the government are they're putting something in that <laughs> shot. I don't want them to track me. And I was like, you do have a cell phone, right? You just posted <laughs> this from your phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So whatever anybody wants to but, think about COVID, I just thought that one perspective was yes, really funny. Exactly, exactly, Mitch. And and uh, but that's just it. People, we we have forgotten the realm of technology, the leaps of technology that have happened. We've we've come to expect it. Yep. Um, and it's funny how fast we've come to expect it. I am. I I say it on the show all the time. I am coming on fifty years old. I remember riding my bike to the public library. Oh yeah. To look things up and find out. Nope. That's in, the, that's in the card catalog at the downtown library. Let me get it transferred here. That's not the case anymore, man. No. We wake oh. up with the news from Poughkeepsie in our face. You don't have to call Nana and Poughkeepsie to find out what the haps is, you know. Um, but at the same time, that also clogs the information filters, Mitch. It makes it very hard to disseminate information sometimes. It makes it very hard, especially in the realm of new fakes, things like oh. that. You know, AI art, everything else. It's it's gotten harder and harder for an investigator to, oh, off the cuff, and it's going to get be able to see get worse. It's going to get harder and harder. Yeah, absolutely. That's just it. And um, as as these fields progress, the technology progresses with them, and we have to we have to change the way that we look at the technology and the way that we apply the technology and the way that we understand how the technology is applied. Even the fact of being able to being able to give chat GPT a command to <laughs> go through and sort for this kind of information in the MUFON database. Yeah. The fact that previously that would have been a heap of information and a crazy amount of data to pay some, to, to pay a team of people to call through. Um, the prime example would be, I'm, I'm very good friends with the head of Blueberry Podcasting. And they do a they do an awards thing every year. This was the first year that they were ever able. They've always wanted to like. I wonder how many people are spoofing accounts and voting for their show. I wonder how many people are using the same email address. This and that. When you're talking millions of votes for a show, and forty categories and ten shows in each category, that's a mountain of information to call. Yep. Three hours, man. Wow. They did it in three hours with the chat GPT command and found tens of thousands of votes that were fake. <laughs> and it's like, wow, wow. Uh -huh. And he straight up said it. He was like, this is stuff that we've wanted to do, but would have taken us a team of 30 people. Yeah. 10, 12 days to call through. And the cost of that would have been exorbitant <laughs> and unreal. Yeah. You know, and to know that we can now leverage this kind of technology to investigate data to put it up yeah. against known footage and see if it compares things like that it's it's remarkable the things that we can leverage now even even the idea of um going back and re-examining older stuff yeah with new technology it's it's great it's great it is and our world changes almost daily yeah almost every day you know yeah. it's 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 amazing to me and sometimes i, I just I'm just completely mystified that we live in the age we do, but think what it's going to be a hundred years from now. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> even the fact of uh, typically at this point is when I hold up an SD card and mention like this, this holds a ton of information. I have an SD card in my backpack that has all kinds of schematics, things like, like I could rebuild civilization with some of the stuff that's on that <laughs> SD card, Mitch, like computer schematics, things like that, all kinds of stuff. If I go back, if I go lose that outside and it gets kicked around in the dirt and gets buried for 50 years and then somebody finds it, it's an amazing realm of data on there. <laughs> Do they know what an SD card is? Do they have the technology to be able to read an SD card? Yep. So think about all the knowledge. They said a few years ago that there was a, a wafer of quartz that was going to be coming out that could hold 100 terabytes of information. 100 terabytes on a wafer of plain quartz. Oh. So when you start thinking about ancient technologies, things like that, we, we reinvent ourselves as humanity oh, regularly, time. regularly. My wife so. and I, at our, at our house, you know, we have an 1861 home called The Grove, and uh, we put in a, uh, uh, a time capsule mm. about 10 years ago to be opened uh, on the uh, 
200th anniversary of the house or something like that. Cool. Anyway, so we put all this stuff in it, but one of the things I did, and I thought about it a lot, I ended up dumping my entire computer, everything, onto a USB drive, and I put it in there, and I said, this is my life. This is my books. This is wow. my finances. This is everything. I said, now you have a problem. This is a USB drive. <laughs> is it going to be available? <laughs> is it going to be available? Exactly. So I bought a, uh, a little USB port and put it in there, and I said, here's as much technical information yeah. about USB. You're on your own. Now, exactly. They may be, never be able to do anything with it. Yeah. Or maybe they'll go to uh, a museum boot up an old computer and say, oh my gosh, we got it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> precisely, <knows? laughs> precisely. And, and that's just it, man. When we're looking at these things, when we're looking at these objects, we have to realize and be ready for the fact that we may not be able to process some of this data for oh, a little while. Yeah. You know, um, and that's exactly uh, right. the, the fact of seeing it, being exposed to it, having the conversation right now is what's important. Not necessarily the fact that we can prove or disprove it. The important thing is the conversation is now open. Yes. Which opens the door to the technologies, which opens the door to disclosure and sharing and stories and yeah, experiences. All that's part of that paradigm shift I was talking about. Exactly. It, just, it seems to be happening right in front of us. It's great. Yeah. It's great to see, man. It really is uh, because we have we have been divided on many of these topics for far too long that, as Reagan said, Imagine how quick we'd be united yes. if. <laughs> Imagine if this was the case, how quickly our differences would be put aside. Yeah. You know, and, and we are right up against that right now, Mitch. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming Man, on, taking the it. time. It's always it, a pleasure. Let everybody always. know where they can go to get their copy of Close Encounters of the Texas Kai and all your other books. Yeah, uh, of course, I'm all over Amazon and things like that. You can go to TexasUFO.com. It's got some uh, uh, different Texas UFO books, uh, mine, but everybody else's too, just so you can see what all is out there about Texas. Texas has a rich history. It and, does. And so uh, I'm kind of uh, proud to have captured a little bit of that there. So, yeah, TexasUFO.com, but for sure, uh, Amazon.com, anything like that. Anyway, it sold in a lot of stores. And well, stuff, but. Thank you, man. I appreciate the time. Oh, absolutely. It is always. Always a genuine pleasure. Same. On the show. Same. And while you're online checking out all the amazing amazing work of Mitch Whittington over at TexasUFO.com, folks, make sure to stop on by CuriousRealm.com. That is where you can find all the episodes. That's where you can like, subscribe, follow us on YouTube, all the platforms, uh, Rumble, everything. Uh, you can also stop on by CuriousRealm.com forward slash story if you have had an encounter with UFOs, UAPs, if you have had a close encounter of the third kind, or an encounter with the paranormal. Stop on by, fill out our experience or forum, leave us your evidence. We will get with our professionals and experts in the field, try to find answers for you. Stay tuned through these commercial breaks. We will be right back with our continuing coverage of Texas UFOCon 2023 right here in Jefferson, Texas, after this. Thank you.